Hi, welcome to the RDS 25 plus thumb rules. These are certification essentials necessary to clear these three certification exams. Please subscribe to my channel and like my videos. Please remember this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications. Please visit the various playlists on this channel. In this part, we will look at these different topics related to RDS, which includes reserve instance, scaling, snapshots, backups, product supported and so on. Let's jump into the thumb rules. The first one is, what is an RDS? It is a managed service. It is basically a database service, but a relational database. Okay, a no, it is not a NoSQL database. It is a relational database on cloud, on AWS. So suppose on premises, you have Oracle or PostgreSQL database. So can you move to AWS? Yes, you can because RDS, you can move it in RDS itself because RDS supports MySQL, Maria database, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres SQL database. See, RDS is a managed service. What it means is AWS will take care of managing the infrastructure. So it will provision the infrastructure and it will perform administrative tasks after your database is created. It will perform automated backups, patching the software and so on. See, with optional multi-AC deployments. So you can choose if you want you can choose multi easy if you don't want you can opt out so rds if you are using multi easy deployments what it does is it does a synchronous data replication across easies with automatic failover so that what it means is uh, your rds database will be highly available and reliable because uh, it will not go down if easy one goes down your instance will be still available in AZ2 and it's a synchronous data application that means there is no delay or no difference between the data if there are 100 transactions in AZ1 there will be 100 in AZ2 and 100 in AZ3 see when you have a database like Oracle on premises and if you move it to cloud you have two choices you can either use managed services like RDS or you can put it on EC2 instance and you can manage it on your own. Okay, so which one will have more work for you? Putting on EC2 will be more effort for you. Putting on RDS will be less effort for you because AWS will take care of a lot of stuff. So obviously which one will be expensive? RDS will be expensive. Putting on EC2 will be less expensive. It is less expensive because a lot of work will be done by you. That's why. So if you have to run RDS on premises, the RDS is a service which is also available on on premises, not only on AWS. It is also this is a key. An AWS cloud practitioner exam, you will get this question. You can run it on, on premises. Okay, it works both the places. And how do you run it? Using outposts. You can have a read on outposts separately you can google and read it see what is a database instance see, we all know database i think you all may be from this background only networking people they are not very much aware about how the databases work so for them it is what is a database instance it's a very commonly used term database instance it is primarily comprising of compute and storage see i told you in when you were on premises you are using say oracle or sql server okay now you're saying boss i am moving to cloud and i have already invested in thousands of licenses for the users for oracle and sql server i do not want to waste them what should i do hey aws what should i do aws says boss we have a concept called byol that is bring your own license so you can put these databases on ac2 instance and you can reuse the same license the same investment on licenses you did on premises will not be wasted by default you can create 40 tv instances now what are the different ways so you should remember this uh, you can have a read at it what are different ways to import data into rds from on premises you want to get it into rds so you can use like sql dump sql import SQL order. See, if it's Oracle, you can do import export or SQL order. 
uh, you can do full backup files you can use bcp for sql servers you can use pgdump for postgres these so you will get some question what i have seen is uh, i i have usually seen questions which involves mysql dump uh, sql order import export and bcp see when we say we have to pay money for this hosting this database what what is the money paid for it is paid for these activities it is paid for the db instance hours your instance is running okay it is paid for, so for the compute you are putting that you are paying for that for storage you are paying for that because your data is ultimately hold it inside the database so you have tables fields so your data is there it is storage then IO requests like ETL processes are hitting and telling boss give me the data. Some websites are hitting and saying give me the data. So there are IO input output requests. Then there are provision IOPS. Then there is backup storage. So in AWS, whatever database instance you have, it is it can be continuously set as backup. And then you will be paying for data transfer costs. So a quick question, and this comes in the exam. You will get scenarios both in cloud practitioner and cloud uh, solution architect associate. The scenario goes this way. Uh, it, it will say that, that, that we have stopped the database. Now will I have to pay the money? Yes, you will have to pay the money, not for the compute. Your brain has stopped, not for the compute. You will have to pay the money for storage. Okay, so that, that is one thing you should remember. Now you know there is a DB instance and suppose there is a backup. So uh, DB instance should cost more right than the backup because backup people store it because backups should be cheap but that is not the way that is not how it happens here because uh, db instance storage is done in the same AZ and backup instance is stored in a different AZ or a different region that's why it is a bit expensive now see whenever you create rds managed services you have multiple options you can do pay as you go that means on demand instance on demand means there is no commitment you can use whenever you want you can leave whenever you it's like your uber you can book uber whenever you want or you can tell it i want to get down here okay now there is uh, uber is expensive right if if we give you an option that you buy a car so car capex will be high like the first time investment will be high but your operational cost will be low because because you know if if you have your own car you and if you're traveling for few kilometers you're only paying 50 rupees but the same uh, for the same ride, if you book Uber, you will be paying 400-500 rupees. So you will be saving on the operational cost. So here also, if you want to save the cost on RDS database, you go for reserve instance. Okay, it will reserve it for one to three years term. See, there is no difference between these reserve instances and on-demand instances. It is same. The only difference we will see is the way DB instances are built. So there is a discount. Reserve instance is cheap compared to on demand instance but use reserve instances only when you know that i will be needing this database for one to three years if you think that it is just a three months gig do not go for reserve instance proceed with on demand instance see this service is specific for a region like we discussed iam is not specific for a region when you are creating iam service you do not have to select the region but when you create an rds reserve instance you will have to select an instance and you can also select an availability zone so reserve instances are not specific to azs okay but they are specific for regions suppose you bought reserve instance for one region can you change it to another region no you cannot change it you cannot you cannot you cannot okay however you can use any az within that same region but the region you cannot change so reserve instance that's why we are saying reserve instance is a commitment it's less like marriage it's not live in relationship live in relationship is your on demand okay you can move anytime but your marriage Reserve instance your marriage, you have to give a commitment, boss, stick with me for one year or three years. And if you are sticking with me, you cannot go to a different region. You cannot <laughs> go to a different girl, okay? Again, like I told, it's a marriage. You have signed a contract, you have a marriage agreement, you cannot cancel it now. So you have to stay together with this husband for a longer period of time. I, don't, I know you don't like your husband, but you have to stay with your husband. Is that way, okay? And 
whenever you buy a reserve instance there is some amount of one time payment first time you have to do some bulk payment okay so so that is also not refundable you cannot cancel you cannot refund get your money refunded so in marriage also if if the girl and the boy has spent uh, uh, for the marriage that money if the divorce happens uh, that is not refunded see uh, imagine i want to scale up so if i want to scale up will i need to take my service down no it's not necessary i can keep my db instance available and i can still scale up so you see the storage no there are three types magnetic storage provisioned iops general purpose so magnetic storage if you have small databases and people are accessing less frequently like once in 3 days they are accessing put it on magnetic storage why you want to put it on expensive storage magnetic is cheap provision iops is like you have oltp workloads a lot of transactions you know your credit card is getting swapped multiple times your banking transactions in a day five six transactions each customer is having put it on provision iops that's good and general purpose is suitable for range of different database workloads like where you have moderate ios okay but provision you need consistent io because your website is continuously entering data if the io is not consistent sometimes it is high sometimes low the end users will feel the pinch performance pinch that's why you should use provision iops now let's talk about backup why is backup necessary because database is holding crucial information there is so much of banking transaction data there is so much of retail data there is so much of customer personal data maintained so you will have to back it up at a regular interval okay so that at any time if your database goes down or gets wiped out you have a backup from which you can restore so the data cannot be lost there are two ways of doing that backup the first way we are talking about is a uh, backup the other way is snapshot so what is the retention period of the automated backups you can retain it for 7 days okay and free backup storage is limited to the size of provision so uh, you will be charged for the backup storage also but initial up to the size of provision database is free beyond that it is chargeable see this 7 day retention period very important from an exam certification perspective they will give you scenarios they will say i was i am retaining it for 7 days what should i do no so any backups you should store it in s3 you should not store it on ec2 uh, that block storage you should not store it there it is very expensive you should store it uh, you should not store it in the database also that server also you should store it in s3 s3 is dirt cheap now i ask you a question if your database i delete that database will i lose all the backups and uh, snapshots that i had taken yes automated backups are deleted when db instance is deleted but if you you as a person has taken manual snapshots now it will not be deleted they will be still retained even if you delete the actual database this scenario is very important from an exam standpoint in aws solution architect associate you will be definitely asked aws solution architect professional also you will be asked you will be given a big scenario but the outcome will be this only needless to say aws is a modern solution so it will give you encryption it can encrypt at rest it can encrypt at transit encryption at transit is done through tls protocol encryption at rest you can do it using the kms keys key management service keys the keys are stored there using that you can encrypt and decrypt the data please remember i'll tell you again this will come in the certification you should remember rds does not encrypt or does not encrypt by default you will have to choose if you want it okay so suppose if you have a database instance which is encrypted so what will happen with the snapshots and backups that will be also encrypted because if the parent is encrypted the child will also be encrypted this is also important you will be put a scenario in aws solution architect associate where they will say boss my primary database instance is encrypted i create a snapshot i create a database backup will that be encrypted or not it is around that now this question i see it is very popular what they do is i have a database it is not encrypted because i was foolish earlier i didn't know i have to protect my data now i have become gyani knowledgeable now i know i want to protect my data i want to encrypt it can i do it 
can i do it yes you can do it there's a process to do it you will have to first create a copy of that snapshot specify your encryption key and then you can restore an encrypted database or db cluster from the encrypted snapshot this is the process this is the only process there's no other process only process ratify this by heart this because in the exam exact scenario comes fi cloud practitioner certification exam you will be asked is rds hipaa compliant yes it is hipaa compliant you don't know what is hipaa there are a certain set of compliance if you don't know about hipaa please google and have a read as with other uh, amazon services even with rds we will use cloud trail to monitor the logs log monitoring is done through cloud trail we will get all the logs here in cloud trail and do analytics on top of it and needless to say if i want to monitor let it be database instance i can use cloud watch there are different metrics i can use those metrics to monitor the rds databases see we covered these many topics in this part of the video okay please subscribe to my channel like my videos i am not getting enough subscriptions i am not getting enough likes please help me out this brings us to the part of end of this part i will see you in the next part stay tuned and please subscribe for being tuned and alerted when i post such contents do not forget to visit different playlists i have put on some real exam questions for aws and azure certifications See you in the next part.